You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Zach Bechtold and Matt Franks. If you'd like to learn more about the Bearded Theologians, you can go online at beardedtheologians.com, where we have past podcasts, blogs, and a couple items for sale. So check us out, beardedtheologians.com. Thank you for listening, and enjoy this week's show. You're listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast, hosted by Matt Franks and Zach Bechtold. Um, so this week on the uh, Beardcast, um, we were kicking around ideas on uh, what to talk about, and the word righteousness uh, bubbled up to the surface. And so, Zach, as you uh, think about righteousness, uh, what are some things that uh, may come to mind for you? You know, right, righteousness is an interesting theological term, isn't it? Um, you know, before before we hit record, uh, before we hit record, we had, you know just the conversation of, yeah, what is it? <laughs> and, and as we got to digging and why we thought it'd be a fun conversation is there's, there's more than just what is righteousness, right? Um, we, we think about righteousness in a lot of different ways or can think about righteousness in a lot of different ways. And, and maybe, maybe this question's hard because we often think about it in terms of, well, how are we personally righteous? Um, and what does that look like? And do we live into that? We can also think of it in terms of the righteousness of God, the righteousness of, uh, Jesus Christ, you know, there's, uh, civil righteousness and, and probably my favorite, there's righteous indignation. Um, let me be angry for the sake of, of, uh, you know, ethical and moral dilemma, right? Um, we see Jesus have righteous indignation at, at times in, um, you know, his response to things, not often, but at times, um, you know, in, and so when I think about righteousness, um, you know, almost every, every definition or every, every place we look, regardless of who it was, uh, talking about, whether it was God, whether it was us, whether it was Jesus, um, in humanity, what, whatever, as a group of people, um, it, Righteousness, the idea of righteousness leans on maintaining right relationships um, and doing, uh, doing good, uh, doing what is uh, moral, doing what is right. And, and so for me, you know, the, the nutshell of what I think righteousness is, is how are we living into, uh, how are we living in our, into our relationship with God and how is that moving us uh, to action? And, um, how we're, yeah, just how do we live into that righteousness to do, to do good, uh, to share God's love and grace in those ways. And so as a long rambly answer of nothing, <laughs> but it's a lot, it's, it's interesting to think about righteousness. Um, and, and so Matt, where, where do you land on righteousness? Well, you stole my answer. Um, good. it is about right relationship, <laughs> uh, with God and humans and things, but I think when we think about righteousness, um, I think for Wesleyans, it's about moving towards perfection. Mm -hmm. And uh, to to live a righteous life would be that ideal or that mantra of that we are moving towards perfection. And and the work that we do in that matters and whatever it is, um, you know, I think that that's important. Um, but that right relationship with God matters in a sense of love. Uh, love for God and love of neighbor. Jesus pretty is pretty clear on that. I mean, very mm -hmm. clear on that actually, and and especially how Jesus modeled uh, his ministry was extremely clear. Um, and <clears throat> so, um, a few years ago, I was asked that question. You know, Matt, what what's righteousness? And at first, I couldn't think of anything because I just was like, it's not really a word we really use. I mean, at least in our circles, um, mm -hmm. it might be different in other circles, but. I know from a Wesleyan United Methodist perspective, I've not really ever heard that word, um, not something we use in our vernacular too often. Um, however, but if you start thinking about it, it really is about the means of grace that we live out as uh, Methodists, as uh, followers of Jesus, as Wesleyans. Um, and those works of piety and, and, and all those things that we do matter because uh, it centers our relationship with God and to have a right relationship with God uh, calls us to, um, reflection and action and all those fun things. And that's, and, and maybe that's the conversation. Um, you know, we, we use righteousness sparingly. Um, 
and I, I would venture, you know, when, when we read this definition and we talk about right relationships, um, that feels abrasive to me, mm -hmm. um, because what, because the follow-up question is, well, what is right <laughs> and who gets to decide what is right? Um, but, it, but you pointed exactly to it as, as Wesley stands as, as, as United Methodist, we, we are moving on to perfection, right? And I think that really, I, I think we point to that over righteousness because, because of that, because moving on to perfection is a, a, a whole lot less abrasive and, and brings up fewer questions of, well, who, who gets to decide what is right and wrong or um, dictate all of that. Uh, but it is, it, I, I, I agree with you. I think it's all, a, all one and the same, and it's just the language and what we choose theologically and, and, um, you know, to surround that with and to move us towards it. And I, I like that. I, I like moving, uh, obviously I like moving on to perfection a whole lot more than right relationship because like I said, it's just, it feels abrasive. Um, well, but, and you and I come from backgrounds, uh, right. where that has been, uh, yeah. You know, and I joked with you, you know, if you were to die tonight, do you know where you'd end up? And right. you know, that we we have that experience and 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 that can be toxic and harmful and hurtful. And um I think one of the hard things we have to wrestle with and play with is, you know, what um what does that look like? Um in a faith community, yeah. I mean it's a community, so you have boundaries and you have things and mm -hmm. processes and rules and regulations and and we tend to shy away from that. However, there's some healthiness to that too. It holds us accountable. Um, but then even self-righteousness, you know, like, you know, that's your personal ethic. What does that look like? Um, you know, for me, if it causes no harm and it points to love, then that's good. If it doesn't, then we need to reconsider that. Um, right. And I think it's a, um, I think when we think of righteousness, um, I think it's one of those things that um, it's, a broad word with lots mm -hmm. of different definitions and lots of different work. Mm -hmm. However, um, I think that we can, um, if we had to land the plane on this, <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, it would be about the, like, you know, what direction are you heading is a question I think you could wrestle with. Um, yeah. Well, and, and, and like you said, it, it carries, righteousness carries a lot of things, uh, both good and it carries a lot of baggage, right? Self-righteousness can go both ways, uh, where, where it's doing good. Uh, but at what point does our self-righteousness become really self-centered and, yeah. and causes harm? Righteous indignation, right? If, if we're angry, to seek justice and it moves us to seek justice and, and to fix the system and, and bring hope and love and grace and, and stuff for the, uh, for those that are, that are the least of these, right. That moves us towards, uh, action. If we're being righteously indignant because we're just angry and we're not getting our way, that's different, right? Like, I, I think that's something to recognize in, in the conversation of righteousness is, where, like you said, where is it moving us to? Is it moving us to do good and do no harm? Is it moving us closer to God? Or is it pushing us inward uh, to be self-serving and self-centered? Uh, it has, righteousness has the potential to do both of those things. And it's, I think it's, you talk about right relationships and that, for me, that's where that comes back in the circle of, okay, where's my relationship? Who, uh, with God, with my neighbor, with myself, and where is that pushing me? Yeah. And I think that, you know, that's definitely a great place to land, um, as we, um, close for today, um, is, is when you think about righteousness, like for you, for those of our listeners, you know, what, what does that stir up within you? Um, and have you thought about that? I mean, I, I don't think it's one of the more essential theological words, however, it is a word used in some circles. And so it's just a good way of being aware of that terminology and what that can mean and what, you know, I'm not saying what it has to mean, but I think it's one of those things that if we do it right, mm -hmm. um, then we'll find our happiness and our peace with that word in a way that can be helpful and fruitful. It's kind of like when, you know, we were talking about it, uh, in the pre-show, uh, I, you know, just basically as I 
Baptist Methodist understanding of salvation. I mean, that's yeah. really it. I mean, if we want to talk about how to be righteous, that's yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty much it. Um, well, and it's the the word's going to come up throughout Scripture all over the place, yes. right? We especially in the Hebrew Bible, um, it, it's going to come up with Noah, with Abraham. You know, those people are often referred to as the righteous. Noah was a righteous man, right? Well, what does that yeah. mean? And in, in sort of wrestle with, you know, the fullness of those stories of what it means to be a righteous person uh, in the pitfalls that come with that also. Because uh, you see that, you know, you see that Noah's story. He's a righteous man, but he also uh, gets drunk and naked and curses his family all in the same breath, right? And so, uh, I think it's a good thing for us to wrestle with and and maybe is a good grounding space for us, you know, in our own in our own relationships and in our own um moving towards perfection. Maybe it's a good yeah. barometer. That was the word I was looking for. That's a good word. Um I think it's definitely a good barometer. Um like I had said, where's it leading you to? I think yeah. that that definitely a, a thing. And so as we land this plane today. <laughs> Uh, what what does uh, righteousness look for you, like to you? Uh, feel free to comment and uh, check back with us on our uh, website or social medias. Uh, you can find us at Bearded Theologians. Uh, we have a website, beardedtheologians.com. We're on most of the social media things. Um, and then, uh, you know, definitely pick up some items to buy uh, for the fall. Uh, pick yourself up a nice hoodie, uh, Bearded Theologians hoodie. Um, and so for the Bearded Theologians, I'm Matt Franks. I'm Zach Bechtold. Thanks for checking us out. I want you to subscribe and like this video and put that thumb, push that thumbs up. Thank you for listening to the Bearded Theologians podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on all social media outlets. You can check out old episodes and more information at beardedtheologians.com. Thanks for checking us out.